have the last talk uh, of the session. We have the wonderful Tanis Davidson from the Grant Museum of Zoology. Hi again, everybody. Um, right, so I'm not sure if you are aware, um, but we've recently reopened the Grant Museum following a nine month closure, um, which was the result of receiving some DCMS Wolfson Galleries Improvement Fund funding. It was a hundred thousand pounds that were, was awarded to us uh, about a year and a bit ago. Um, and this fund was topped up by UCL and in the general reports that have been kind of in the media about the uh, project, the, um, the number given is 300,000 pounds, but there was uh, in, you know, just to be totally honest here, some creative budgeting and pulling from other pots of money. So the project really cost about 400,000 pounds. So initially, um, the idea with the, um, what we wanted to do was to upgrade uh, some of our old 1930s cases. Um, any of you familiar with the Grant Museum, these were the white cases that may or may not have been from the Great Exhibition. Um, up uh, and also update the displays and interpretation of those cases and where possible elsewhere in the museum, but it's an ongoing kind of project, so there are more labels to be written. Um, this project would encompass some building work, so uh, you may be familiar, we had uh, old uh, hanging down and making it difficult to get into our wall cases, fluorescent lightings from the 1960s. In the room, we wanted to remove those, uh, replace some of the side lighting with LEDs for more sustainable lighting as part of the general UCL Estates program, and uh, give a, you know, bit of a refreshing with the paint, etc. Um, ultimately, though, all of this was towards incre increasing the um, accessibility for both our visitors in terms of being able to see the specimens in the cases. Um, again, those charming old cases didn't have any lighting in them, and they were quite difficult to actually see what was in the cases. Um, but also for us, you know, we are a working museum, we have drawers, and we're in and out of the cases all the time using the comparative material in our teaching, and a lot of these are Fit, were not fit for purpose. So it was to uh, improve the sustainability of the specimens themselves. Whoops. Okay. So um, for the purposes of this chat, um, you know, I could talk all day uh, or forever about what went into this project. Um, but I've picked out sort of four things that I want to share with you today that might be useful um, if you have a project of any size or scale yourselves going forward. Um, so really, I wanted to talk about the planning, um, how important that is. Also, number two would be staying on brand and really knowing who you are. Um, number three would be the need for having resilience. And number four is the documentation of the work. So anyways, here we go. It all started with a simple plan. So this is the what we were going to do. Um, the green cases are the ones that were going to be replaced. Um, and there's a picture of the, the old white cases that we had. Um, so this is sort of, you know, what we were going to do in terms of the cases. And we had to clear the cases, of course. We had We used a company called Reuse. Um, that took them away and they were sold to better homes. So we did all of the removal in the most sustainable way that we could. Of course, we put them out for UCL or anybody who wanted them or other museums could come and collect them if they wanted to do so. We had a couple of takers, but not so much. But ultimately, they all went to new homes. So we're quite happy about that. Um, all of the work for what we wanted to do in the Grant Museum had been uh, slightly informed by other work. So we had accessibility reviews and some stakeholder consultation. Um, and what we wanted to do went hand in hand with who was going to actually do it. So planning this part, you know, internally, who we're going to need to have on board. Um, I'm not going to read these all out. Some of them kind of came, you know, as surprise late in the day. Um, you know, we had our own ex uh, access consultants, external access consultants, both before and during the project. But then there was the, uh, you know, some they kind of materialized from UCL Estates and UCL itself um, late in the game. So that kind of stalled things. But you know, we soldiered on. Um, UCL branding. So the bicentenary of the university is coming up in a couple of years, and apparently they're changing the branding. So even though our project is not in a couple of years, we needed to make a decision and have sign up at higher levels 
as to like what we're going to be calling ourselves and is that you know you know we can always change it everybody but what are we allowed to do now so there was a lot of unexpected back and forth forth with that which was uh, slightly annoying um externally uh project management it so the grant museum is in a listed building so there was a, a whole a bit of work in terms of getting permission from Canada council and reassuring them that what we were going to do in the space um, wasn't in any way conflicting. Um, so lots of photographs and reports and waiting around and fingers crossing that all happened. Um, and just a list of uh, some of the other people that were involved. So lots, lots of hope. All right. Um, so this really guided the planning and also the work and everything that we did. So, you know, who are we? What are we trying to do? And ultimately, we are a university museum. We are a working collection, as I mentioned. We're using teaching and research. And, you know, these things need to be, uh, you know, available for our, our stakeholders and our, our, our clients, our students and researchers that want to come in. So um, one of the things that uh, came out of this was, you know, we had to, you know, try to maintain business as usual. Um, so because of the, the time and the budget of the of this project, you know, we had to make do with using the office space as our kind of store. So the office furniture had to go out and then everything packed into really usefuls, put into the office space while the building work could happen in the main museum area. So then so this is like removing the lighting and all the kind of work that had to be um, you know, done over the summertime before the case makers came in. So there was a bit of museum Tetris. So then when the case people came in, we had to clear the main space back into the office. And then when the cases were in, we had to decant the office. So the building work contractors, electricians could do the office space. So it was, it felt like we did everything several times. Um, so it was, you know, a clean space, a dirty space, a messy space, a this, a that, whatever. So um, you know, if you have some idea of that in your planning, that that's what you're going to do and the reason why you're doing it. So again, with the decant, we had to have uh, specimens laid out and accessible for us for the conservation work that was going to happen, uh, the specimens that we we're going to need for teaching, because although we were close to the public, we had this grand plan that we would have all this tetracy worked out and be able to facilitate our, you know, 3,000 students during term one, which we did. Um, Anyway, so there's, you know, I thought I took a million more photographs of this, but in one of this, you can see there's a bit of a cordon off, but we did actually do the teaching. So everywhere around the side of this space is very much, uh, you know, cabinets or new cases that aren't being filled yet or in, in the progress of being uh, recanted. Um, really useful boxes around the side. And so, you know, it's really kind of sectioning off the areas, but it was a great uh, opportunity. So um, we did 103 practicals um, from September to January. We opened in, in February officially. Um, so, you know, these were all with, with uh, specimens, but it was a great opportunity. And a lot of the um, uh, module leaders that uh, use the space, turn this into a learning experience for their students. So, you know, obviously it's kind of a thrilling, like behind the scenes, like it's closed and we're allowed to go in there and like, wow, you get to use specimens for our first years, you know, it's kind of a nice opportunity anyways, but to be able to talk about, you know, how you redevelop a space and how do you write labels and what stories are you going, going to tell and how do you decide on the interpretation? And why do you choose these colors and what are you putting in the cases? So um, lots of discussions about that. I think most of the practicals that happened or the different modules that um, came and used the Grant Museum incorporated some element of our redisplay into their teaching. Um, again, maintaining, uh, you know, being true to who we are. Uh, one of the things that everybody loves about the Grant Museum, I hope you all agree, is that we have specimen rich displays. Mm -hmm. um, and this is due to the nature of, again, we are a teaching museum. So you have the comparative material on display. So you know, our students, but also our visitors can see, you know, the similarities and differences between the different species and the different animals out there. So, you know, it, it's an absolute must to have like all of it on display as much as we can anyways, but also not shying away from the fact that we are actually a teaching museum. And, um, you know, we, you know, using the word teaching and interpretation isn't a bad thing. Using the word research in your interpretation isn't a bad thing. 
So again, we're not trying to be anybody else. We're not trying to be the Natural History Museum. Um, this is what we do and we do it really well and we're proud of it. And as soon as you know, it became clear that everybody was on board with agreeing that's what it was, it went a lot smoother. All right, um, so the next point I just wanna cover is about resiliency. So, um, and expecting the unexpected. Right, so you know most budgets, you know projects, you will have a uh, contingency with with you know budgetary and financial, but you know you have to, you know expect the unexpected. So it might be staff leaving, um, unexpected costs, changes in design, availability of people involved, or if their situation changes and they're not uh, available to be on call in the same sort of way. Um, you know, institutional hurdle, hurdles, you know, I mentioned the new branding, uh, the shared foyer space, which was not really part of the Grant Museum, but after we'd done the museum and we wanted to redo the entrance, it became this battle about like whose face is it, who makes the decision, so that was kind of a, a last minute spanner in the works. Also the fire capacity change, just right in the middle, so instead of having like 120, we went down to 40 at one point and then back up to 60. So that was all a bit stressful at the end there. Um, but anyways, you, you get to the project and you get to a point where you're able to clean it all up and get the photographs taken because the uh, opening is looming. And then the Eastman Dental Clinic, which is above you, leaves their tap on over the weekend and you come in on Monday to a horrible flooding situation. So, um, you know, this is like the drama of the moment. Um, uh, it was it was it was shocking, um, but it wasn't as disastrous as it could have been. So we we're quite lucky. It did drip and rain down for about a week, and um, two months later, it is still wet, even though it looks okay. Um, you know, um, Han and Alice are in the audience here. <laughs> um, are probably laughing. At the, you know, the three Marias. So the only help we actually got from the Eastman Dental Clinic was they brought down the dental sheets that you get when you teeth. Clean. And for some reason, I don't know, to mop up like the foot of water that was everywhere. So, you know, having a sense of humor about these things, um, perhaps, you know, it is a bit of a mental episode or whatever, but we got through it um, with, with the smiles on our faces. Um, and, you know, this is just a, a last shot of, you know, again, um, a month and a half later after it had dried, we had to kind of, um, you know, do the, the final building work. So lastly, I know I'm way over time, um, is document the work. So, you know, you will forget things, even though you feel like you never will, and the experiences are seared into your brain forever. Um, you'll want to relive it at some point. Trust me, you will. I mean, it won't seem quite so bad as it did at the time. Like, we can laugh at some of those flood pictures, can't we, Hannah? Yeah, just about. Um, you also need it for reporting. So, again, your higher ups or your university, it's nice to show the before and after, but also kind of remind you, um, you know, what actually went into the job. I've forgotten all about how we changed the lighting or there's a big debate about the colors of the paint and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, you, you will need that. And, um, it is also a great way to remember all the people who were involved. So I haven't listed everybody, but this is just a smattering of the folks that were involved. Again, it was a cast of like many, many people um, internally and externally that helped on the team. So thank you to everybody. Um, and thank you again to Hannah and Alice. And we will also be around for the full Natska. So if you have any questions about the flood or those outfits or how we handled it or remained happy-go-lucky. And I'm pleased to report we're all actually speaking to each other. Um, so yes, yeah, so uh, thank you both. And thank you to everyone for listening to that.